continuing the preventative maintenance on our diesel X5 during the transmission swap, I went ahead and pulled the, let's see if you can see in there, there we go, pulled the transfer case actuator uh, so that I could check the gear in it, uh, because this is a pretty convenient time. Uh, it's pretty simple to take out, it's just four E-Torx, uh, E-10s, they come out relatively easily once you have access. Of course this is with all the under panel, uh, underbody trays and panels removed already because of the transmission swap. Also did a fuel filter swap, or replacement. Just trying to get everything done while I'm under here. <laughs> So I don't have to get back under this truck again anytime in the near future. But here is the the actuator itself. Disassembly is fairly easy. There's lots of YouTube videos on it. Um, this will just be one more. Uh, four T25s to remove the motor. Once that's off then you, you want to remove this plate here. And the easiest way to do that is to take a small small flathead and pry into the sides. You may need to take a hammer and use it as like a punch and gently get in there. Once you get in there, I've taken this apart uh, yesterday so this should come apart pretty easy but uh, it, it won't take too much to, to get in there a little bit, and then you just start prying on these two corners. And once you have these two corners up, the rest of it will open up pretty easily. And then once you get that off, you have a circlip in here. And I don't have a pair of snapping pliers that works for that. Uh, I find the best way to do that is with some picks. Uh, or a combination of picks and a couple of screwdrivers. And between those, it comes out without too much fight. And then uh, I'll uh, start the video again once I have that off so I can show you what the next steps are. It's, it's all pretty simple. And like I said, there's other videos on there that are going to be better than this one. But I was doing it, so I figured I'd record it. All right, stand by for the next step. Okay, now that the plate is popped off, it, it didn't take me very long at all. Uh, like I said, I had opened this one up, uh, Not it wasn't yesterday, but uh, a few days before, uh, to inspect the condition of the gear. And I was going to just flip the gear, or rotate the gear 180 degrees, as a lot of people do. Uh, and I'll show you the condition of the gear once I get it out, once I remove that circlip. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't, I couldn't bring myself to do that. I mean, these, here's a replacement gear. Um, I, this was Amazon Primed. It took two days to get here and cost nine dollars. Uh, so I, I couldn't bring myself to just flip or rotate the gear and then put it back in when I could replace it for so cheaply. Supposedly these are CRP, carbon reinforced plastic or something. I don't know how legitimate that is for nine dollars, but I've used these before on other uh, actuators and never had a problem. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one while I have it out. All right, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so I got that circ clip out. It was easier the second time uh, than it was the first time. It, that'll be the hardest part of the whole job is taking that circ clip out. It can be kind of a pain. Uh, I went ahead and took out the uh, the four screws holding in the uh, actuator motor, and here's what we have left. There's a washer up here in there. Uh, that you want to keep track of when you pull this off the shaft. Of course it's all greased so it can get a little, a little slippery. Okay, And that's all the old original grease. We'll clean that out before we put in the new gear. And we'll clean this up too. Take the old gear off. Here's the old gear. You can see this side has virtually no wear whatsoever. That's the original grease that was installed at the factory and when you roll it around to the side that actually gets used let's see if I can pick this up there you go you can start to see the channel that gets 
worn into it from the gear. Oh, come on, focus again. There we go. Worn into it from the gear on the motor shaft. Now this isn't that bad. I wasn't getting any errors for this or anything like that. And I've seen much worse, replaced much worse. Uh, this probably would have kept going for a number of miles without ever causing an issue. Uh, but I'm there, and so this is, does not take that long. It's not that hard a job, so I'm going to replace it uh, while I'm while I have access, easy access. Okay, so now the only thing I got to do is open the new new bag, put it on here, clean everything up, and, you know, pull this gear off of this uh, this shaft, and then. Uh, Clean everything up, clean all the old grease off, and then re-grease it. And you know, as they say, the uh, installation is a reverse of removal. I'll uh, get back to you once that's done. All right, guys, got everything reassembled and re-greased. I went ahead and re-greased all the way around the uh, the black gear, and then most of the uh, well, all of the the worm gear on the motor, the motor shaft. It's, this is a pretty easy job, uh, especially if in my like in my case, so you basically have extremely easy access to the transfer case actuator itself. Um, normally, I'd, if this is the first time ever doing it, just having to put the vehicle on ramps and stuff like that, I would I would guess it probably take hour and a half, two hours. Um, the circ clip on here can be the hardest hardest part. And uh, a note on that: when you're going to reinstall it. Make sure you haven't opened it up too much during re during removal, because um, otherwise it it won't hold. It won't do its job anymore. So I like to take a long set of needle nose and uh, just kind of get in there and pinch it, and just make sure you don't have excess movement. Yeah. You'll you'll be able to tell if you've opened it up too much. It'll it just won't feel right when you put it back on. But if you give it a little squeeze, it shouldn't move too much. If it moves too much, then it's been opened up. And uh, you should take it back off and close it up a little bit with a pair of pliers. Uh, I usually do it before I put it in there, so this didn't, it doesn't move at all right now. But uh, as for where to grease, just around the gear, uh, on the worm, the worm shaft, the worm gear. And then uh, a little bit here in the front. And then a little bit here in the back, too, where BMW had it. Um, the grease I use is... Uh, is this grease? I've never had a problem with it. Um, there, I mean, it's basically just grease. You can use any kind of long-lasting grease, I would imagine. But uh, now that's all done. The only thing left to do is put the cover back on. Uh, when you're removing this, just be careful of the O-ring. You don't really want, or the the seal. You don't want to damage that. Um, I imagine it would let d dust and debris or stuff in there, and uh, don't want that. Uh, to put it on, it goes on fairly easily. It just pops back in, and the way I do this is I like to get that side in, the outside over here, and then work my way around. And usually I'll have to use a small punch to reseat these corners, which is fine. Um, just make sure it's in all the way around. You'll be able to tell when it's nice and flat. Uh, and that's it. That's all that's that's all there is to it. Now you can just reinstall this and uh, there is a transfer case um, adaptation re reset. Some guys say you don't have to do it. I always do it. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but it's it's part of the procedure, I believe, uh, according to BMW. So I go ahead and do it every time. Um, it I guess it just runs through the the uh, actuation and uh, resets limits or something like that but I have access to a tool that'll do it. I use a Foxwell um, NT520 Pro that'll do it so I, I, I go ahead and do it. <coughs> but that's pretty much it guys. Uh, like I said there's a bunch of these videos out there and they'll be better than this one but more information is better than less information right? Alright I'll see you in the next one.